Another 14 million people have left the workforce entirely. Household incomes are down more than $4,000 since the year 2000. That's 16 years ago. Our trade deficit in goods reached nearly, I think of this, think of this. Our trade deficit is $800 billion. Yet, think of that. $800 billion. Last year alone, we're going to fix that. Sarah Root. She was 21 years old and was killed the day after graduating from college with a 4.0 grade point average, number one in her class. Her killer was then released a second time, and he is now a fugitive from the law. I've met Sarah's beautiful family, but to this administration, their amazing daughter was just one more American life that wasn't worth protecting. No more. One more child to sacrifice on the order and on the altar of open borders. What about our economy? Again, I will tell you the plain facts that have been edited out of your nightly news and your morning newspaper. Nearly four in 10 African-American children are living in poverty, while 58% of African-American youth are now not employed. Two million more Latinos are in poverty today than when Obama has almost doubled our national debt to more than $19 trillion and growing. And yet, what do we have to show for it? Our roads and bridges are falling apart. Our airports are third world condition. And 43 million Americans are in food stamps. Now, let us consider the state of affairs abroad. Not only have our citizens endured domestic disaster, but they've lived through one international humiliation after another, one after another. We all remember the images of our sailors being forced to their knees by their Iranian captors at gunpoint. This was just prior to the signing of the Iran deal, which gave back to Iran $150 billion and gave us absolutely nothing. It will go down in history as one of the worst deals ever negotiated. Another humiliation came when President Obama drew a red line in Syria and the whole world knew it meant absolutely nothing. In Libya, our consulate, the symbol of American prestige around the globe, was brought down in flames. America is far less safe, and the world is far less stable than when Obama made the decision to put Hillary Clinton in charge of America's foreign policy. In 2009, pre-Hillary, ISIS was not even on the map. Libya was stable. Egypt was peaceful. Iraq was seeing, and really, a big, big reduction in violence. Iran was being choked by sanctions. Syria was somewhat under control. After four years of Hillary Clinton, what do we have? ISIS has spread across the region and the entire world. Libya is in ruins, and our ambassador and his staff were left helpless to die at the hands of savage killers. Egypt was turned over to the radical Muslim Brotherhood, forcing the military to retake control. Iraq is in chaos. Iran is on the path to nuclear weapons. Syria is engulfed in a civil war, and a refugee crisis now threatens the West. After 15 years of wars in the Middle East, after trillions of dollars spent and thousands of lives lost, the situation is worse than it has ever been before. This is the legacy of Hillary Clinton. Death, destruction, terrorism, and weakness. Problems we face now. Poverty and violence at home. War and destruction abroad will last only as long 
as we continue relying on the same politicians who created them in the first place. A change in leadership is required to produce a change in outcomes. Tonight, I will share with you my plan for action for America. The most important difference between our plan and that of our opponent is that our plan will put America first. <laughs> Americanism, not globalism, will be our credo as long as we are led by politicians who will not put America first, then we can be assured that other nations will not treat America with respect, the respect that we deserve.